So week two of the campaign trail, things are going well. One of the highest areas of interest where people ask me questions I've noticed on the, on the road is actually about my plan to shut down the U.S. Department of Education. I plan to do it as an executive order, as President of the United States, based on Article II authority in the Constitution without asking Congress for permission to do it. That's gonna be a big deal. I think it sets a big precedent, but let's talk about the substance of it. Now, I was reminded to talk about it watching Biden's student forgiveness, loan forgiveness plan this week. Okay, it was, it was argued in the Supreme Court. I expect the Supreme Court is going to turn it down unless it's on grounds of standing, which is a really, I would say, a technical legal grounds that the plaintiffs did not have actual harm to them, certain of these states, to sue. Amy Coney Barrett's comments suggested that she might actually give that standing argument some, some weight. But that would be, for public understanding purposes, a technicality. The real thing that's wrong with this student loan forgiveness program is that in the guise of being a progressive policy, it is actually a regressive policy. Democrats like to take money, they say, from the wealthy to give it, and the wealthy elites to give it to the poor. Well, actually, what are they doing here? They're taking money from Americans who did not go to college and redistributing it to people who did go to college. And you know how many that is? This actually surprised me when I learned it. It's 37% of Americans have a four-year college degree. All right, so you're taking it from the remaining 63% to the 37% who got that four-year college degree. That's regressive. And I think the Supreme Court, I was actually really interested in seeing that they took that into account a little bit with several of the justices bringing up what they called the fairness argument, right? That's not strictly speaking a constitutional point, but it does go to the essence of why this executive order overreached. It went beyond the scope of what Congress legally intended when they passed the HEROES Act, which is supposedly Biden's legal basis for doing this. Actually, that was passed in the 2000s to make sure that people could get debt relief if they went and served in Afghanistan following the 2001 September 11th attacks. And yet now that's being exploited to somehow create a student loan forgiveness program in the year 2022 or 2023. That's really shows, that really shows how far they've tortured the laws to be able to just implement their one-sided agenda, which isn't even that progressive. In this case, it is outright regressive. It's also a symptom though of the thing I said at the beginning, which is that the fact that the Department of Education basically does this every single day, subsidizing four-year college education over vocational education, training someone to be a plumber or a welder. Guess what? We're short on workers in this country. An underappreciated reason why is that we in this country, through the U.S. Federal Department of Education, subsidize one form of education while, under, while, while underweighting completely the actual kinds of workforce training that would have created a workforce that we're now lacking. It's again a self-created problem. $80 billion a year flowing through the Federal Department of Education. And you wanna know something else? That's actually the source of wokeism in a lot of the local schools that you're seeing across the country. It's not just the school board members, okay? It's the Federal Department of Education that uses the money it provides as really a sort of handcuff, as sort of a shackle to enforce this actually one-sided monolithic critical race and gender theory agenda. And so it's a toxic institution. It wastes a lot of money. Take that $80 billion, disperse it to school districts that could actually use it, but do it on a local basis. That alone would even be a better solution. And that shouldn't be a liberal idea or a conservative idea. It's just a part of an American revival. It's the American revival I'm leading. And I think that it's important to lead this with specificity. And, and I think it's one of the things I'm proud of so far in the campaign. We are by far leading the way with specific policy solutions, not just griping with grievance, not just criticizing wokeism, even though I've done plenty of that in the last few years. We're now leading the way with actual solutions. And the whole premise, our entire campaign strategy is that this year isn't even about the who, it's about the what and the why, define the agenda. And our bet is that the voters of this country will reward the person who actually led that defining of the agenda this year when it comes to voting next year. So anyway, thanks a lot, more to say soon. If I have one ask, vivek2024.com, V-I-V-E-K, 2024.com. Just donate a dollar, maybe $5. Make it a small dollar donation. I don't care. That's perfectly good. What we want is a grassroots movement that lifts this up and elevates these ideas to the forefront. Best spot I can get on the debate stage. And then I think this takes off from there. Thanks a lot.